Hi everybody, this is Angel Medina, author of the Thousand Years War series and the founder of the Hybrid Nation. And I'm here with a with the second of the Hybrid Nation workshop series videos. And in this workshop video, well, well, before we get to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a disclaimer because the holidays are coming up. I'm not gonna give you just one workshop video. I'm gonna give you two workshop videos. Just to because you know I won't be doing too much over the holiday week and then the week after is New Year's and you know in po out here in Puerto Rico we always try to celebrate until the sixth so I'll be I, I won't be too it won't be too much action for me you know within that period of time so to make up for the lack of action you know I'm gonna do two 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 videos yeah I know hiccup there. Well, anyway, this uh, this post is gonna be about a question that many writers have in their minds: is what is the most important part of the story? Is it the beginning? Is it the middle? Or is it the very end? Is is it the you know what what's the most important part of any book? And it is a it is a question that many of us ask ourselves, and many and many authors do ask. So I, I'm here to try to answer that the best I can. You know, I don't think I have a concrete answer, but you know, that, but, but, but before we, before I get to uh, my opinion or my answer, you know, let's let's start off by saying it all depends on the genre you're writing it. Because in a informative nonfiction, poetry, or or academic book, if you're writing one of those, then there's no 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 such thing as a beginning, middle, or end, because because you're not really writing a story; you're just writing a like an article and article writing is much different than you know than actual novel writing so f so for the purposes of so for the purposes of this video we're not going to touch on those uh genres we're going to be touching on more of the creative non-fiction or fictional works or you know actual novels short stories you know you know books that have a plot you know for the sake of this video and because I so you, yeah, and you can read more about that in, in my blog post. But anyway, let's go on. So, as you may well know, the rest of you, like me, you know, I'm like a ep if you're writing an epic science fiction or a crime novel, then this is definitely going to be a question that you want to answer, or at least try to answer. Now, you know, now, so, so without further ado, let's get to why each, you know, each part of the book is important in its own respect, starting with the beginning. The beginning of the book is is what's what's first supposed to hook the reader. It's 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 what is supposed to hook the reader in. You gotta it's got a hook. You know, it's it's like a fishing hook. You're trying to catch the fish. So the beginning is like your bro, your hook. Just like uh and and a federal member a federal hybrid nation member, uh, Benjamin Monday made a mention and he said all of it quote and unquote, all of it is equally important. But if I had to say anything I say that the first line of crucial, the first that the first line is of crucial importance. That really needs to be good to get the reader into it. Otherwise, don't bother. Otherwise, the reader isn't gonna bother. And I could agree with that. I think Benjamin makes a good point with that. Is it 100% correct? Mm, I say 75, 25. But I think, but I, but I think I, you could safely say it's mostly correct. A statement like that is understandable why the beginning is very important. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, personally, I wouldn't read a book that's boring as watching a paint, paint dry. You know, if your beginning, if the beginning of your book is as boring as watching paint dry or watching cement dry, then I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to put it down or get a refund. That's how it is. You, at the same time, though, you know, now the same. I don't want to be overwhelmed with an epic action scene. You know, all craziness, all hell breaking news, and I have no idea what's going on, who's who. You know, I don't have a proper introduction to anybody. So, in other words, the beginning is a fine line within the beginning. You know, in short, the beginning has got to be. How can I say this without confusing you? I mean, for me, I prefer more action in the beginning. But the beginning should be an introduction to the characters. You you want to introduce the characters the best you can without boring, without being so boring about it. Without, you know, just try to blend it into the story. You know, 
So as you nano, as you gain, you're, you're writing a narrative, you know, as things happen, you just write a small little narrative describing the character, the personality, what what's going on. No need to go too deep into the knives. You could, because then you could add different parts up to the personality later on in the story. You know, although everybody has their own preference, for me, this is the second toughest part of, you know, of, any, of writing any book. You know, because to make the long story short, in the beginning, you don't want to bore the reader to death, but nor do you want to overwhelm them. I know it's a delicate balance, I know there's a fine line between the two, but if you, but if done correctly, the reader will be after more of your book, and they'll be willing to buy your book. And and, and and if it's a series, they'll be more willing to buy the series. You know, and, I, and I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about your friends or family, I'm talking about, you know, talking about readers and actual people who, who like reading. Now, we move on to the middle. Now, for me, or I think for any writer, the toughest part of any book is the middle. It's, it's easy in the middle. Many authors are flabbergasted by the difficulty of keeping the story moving, which is why the middle is so hard to write perfectly. Because, I mean, is it, some authors find it easy, easy to hook you in, but, but what's the point of hooking in a fish if it's going to escape your hook and go back to, to, to the water just to be hooked by another fisherman or not get hooked at all? What, what's to say that you got the reader hooked and what's not to say that the reader won't just get off the hook and not read your book anymore? Statistically, you know, proven, the facts are proven that many people who start reading a book stop it because they either get bored of reading it or, what, or worse for the author, for the one writing it, is that they get lost in the stories, that they don't understand the story anymore. They, they kind of lost their concentration or they got confused, they lost their way around the story. It's basically the equivalent of falling asleep during a movie, you could say. Only the, only the fact that it's a book, the effects are magnified because a book is not a movie, a book is a, it's just words on a, on a computer screen or words on a, on, a, on a piece of paper. You know, there's no visuals, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a higher chance of a person getting bored of reading a book if it's boring or, or they get, get lost in the, in the part of the story, they just put it down and never read it again. You know, that's just, it just makes it more challenging. I thought you got them hooked. Now, this is where the meat, this is where, you know, this is where the fist, the meat, you know, needs to be in it. You know, you, ha you have to put the meat in the book. This is where all everything starts to unravel and all that. A good trick is to get the reader, for me, what I might like do is give the reader several scenarios of what they think could happen towards the end of the book. You know, give them the, the scenarios. You know, you can make your plot twist, you don't want to make every single plot twist because you want to save one or two for the ending. But, you know, start start twisting the book a little bit. Start throwing in some curveballs here. They don't make it too obvious. You know, like I said, but but remember, when you're giving them the possible scenarios to the readers of the, of the, of the, of the different possibilities, try to show, not tell. It's always that golden rule of showing and not telling. You know, I'm guilty of it sometimes. Sometimes I tend to show, I try to tell more than I show. But I've been improving to, the, to a degree where I've been doing more of the show and less of the telling. So, the, so, so, the, so you know, because so, cause you want the weird to think for themselves of what, what could happen. You know, and, and, and if the reader tells you that their prediction was way off the line, that's okay. That just means you, that, that means you did your job. That means you were successful, you did your job. It's the the way it's not supposed to be able to predict the story. That's the idea of a book: is to make them read it to the end, and make them like it to the end. You know, you know, it, it, it's good to it's good because you want to in the middle. It's supposed to keep your reader on on the tippy toes. It's supposed to keep them in suspense. Like, I'm gonna keep turning. I gotta find out. I gotta find out what's gonna happen next. That's what you want. And you know, I got several fans on like that. It's just wanna keep telling the patron my book because they wanna know what happens because I don't put them to sleep. So you know, so you could you know like I got say you can ask my reader, my ask my readers of the Dawson Years War series, and you know they're actual readers, they're not phony Benoni. You know you could check out the Dawson Years War series after the Spark Post. I'll give you the link to check it out for yourself if you want to purchase any of the books or you want to push 
put purchase the trilogy, get the trilogy, or you get all three books in one. I'll give you the links to that, so you can so you can enjoy a good story from beginning to end. Now, obviously, you know at the middle, the middle is the the only the only outtake of the middle is don't put your ear to sleep before the ending. Now the ending, and now people like to call this the easiest part and. Technically, it is the easiest part because over 75% of the story is probably done by the time. 75 to 80% of the story is already done. But, but the ending is crucial because that, this is your last chance to, to end that, you know, that, 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 that punch line. And here, your, it, it, your biggest book twist or the biggest twist in your story should come out. You know, and, and to, so you can make your book a game changer to separate it. This is, what, this is what's going to separate your book from others. This is your chance to make your book memorable. Make it memorable for the right reasons. You know, this is where your most dramatic scenes happen. And hopefully at this at this point your book isn't too predictable. And hopefully at this point the, the reader hasn't predicted hasn't predicted what was gonna happen or what's gonna happen. Try to keep it unpredictable. Make sure your book is remembered for the right reasons, like I said. All the conflicts should be solved at that at this point. Unless you're Playing the white cliffhanger, or you playing to make it a series, and so so at that juncture, it's okay for a cliffhanger. Just don't make it too abrupt. Although for me, you know, I might, I don't mind abrupt cliffhangers, but some readers do mind. But you know, but honestly, for me, that's more that's more of a opinion thing. That's more of a personal thing. So if you want to make an abrupt cliffhanger, go right on ahead. I'm not gonna tell you not to, but just be just be warned. Some readers are not. They don't like that. They don't like abrupt uh, cliffhangers. So, what is the most important part of the story? To be honest, just like my fe- just my fellow member Benjamin said, every part of the story is equally important. So, for me to say that a particular part of the story is easy, to, is the easiest to write. It's more, or I should say, it's more important to write, or it's more important or more crucial for a story to be good. I can't make a definitive statement. Now. Now, if somebody had a gun to my head, or if I had to say, or to choose, or to choose one, it would be the beginning is the most important because you want to hook the person to the story. Now, for me, it's much harder. For me, it's much harder to hook somebody into the story than it is to keep them in. I mean, I could keep you in all I can. It's hooking you in. That's hard. But then again, here's the bare bones reality. The bare bones reality is an excellent book is strong all around. Beginning, middle, and end. It has a strong beginning, a very strong middle, and even and and, and an even stronger end ending. And this is where the five star books thrive. The books that have five stars are the books that have all three of these enemies, enemies in the strong category. You know, so if you want a five star book, you know, think of it as every part of the book is equally important. There is no important part of the book. You have to write them equally. At, with equal effort, and it's really a matter of opinion than a fact. So, I hope that you know, I hope that I help you. I hope that I help you. I hope that I explain to you, you know, in my opinion, what's the most important part of a book. And I hope you enjoy this podcast. And you could check out the article on, on the Hybrid Nation website, on the on the link on the, in the description. And as always, if you got any uh, questions, comments. You like my videos, you, you know, you might see more. Get hit me up, and I'll be back with the with the third workshop or the second workshop video of the night. I can't. I'll catch you a new later. See ya.